is up, Humanoid Nation? Today's video we're reacting to is by... Sorry? Sam Onella Academy. Nelia Academy. I got requested by this for a long time ago. Yes, I said a long time ago. I'm finally getting to it. You know how I am. I'll, I'll eventually get to this stuff. It'll take a while, but I'll eventually get to the request. Timmy B. Dexter, the dumbest regs and richest story. Don't know who Timmy B. Dexter is, but... I like a good story about how he became rich from being poor to rich. All right, guys, let's do this. This video is sponsored by, by Skillshare. Skillshare. Sam O'Neill Academy, please episode. Hey kids, now we all know that fate is a fickle thing. Some of us may try to defy its will, but there's enough small businesses with Pizza Hut roofs out there to tell you that such a thing is ultimately futile. As for most of us, we tend to have our fair share of good and bad luck throughout our lives. But every now and then, RN Jesus smiles upon some drooling little loaf child and says, You, my son, you shall be the one with all the sticky pudding. That child was Timothy Dexter. Dexter was born in Malden, Massachusetts in 1747. He he had a humble upbringing. Oh, during that time, the 1700s. So, when there was no toilets. Good to know, no working, no working lights. Got it. Dropping out of school as an eight-year-old to work as a farmhand and a leather worker, but Dexter thought he deserved better, so when he grew up, he married one Elizabeth Frothing Ham, a rich widow in need of company. Gold digging achieved, he began his quest. Yeah, man, you did a good job. You saw a rich woman in need? Let's marry her. I'll walk, I'll be into the family. I'll get all that money. Elizabeth Frothing Ham, a rich widow in need of company. Gold digging achieved, he began his quest to become a true aristocrat. As his first step, he thinks, hmm, all the rich guys I know are in positions of power. I should run for office. Now, the town of Malden wasn't much keen on appointing a bumbling second grade dropout, but after rejecting dozens of petitions... What do you mean, s s bumbling second? It's seven, it's seven, it's 1800, 17, wait, when was he born? He's older. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Born in Malden, Massachusetts in 1747. 1747. Yes, so still the 1700s. So, yeah, anybody can be fucking mayor Those during that time. Tasking him with keeping a log shit. As his first step, he thinks, hmm, all the rich guys I know are in positions of power. I should run for office. Now, the town of Malden wasn't much keen on appointing a bumbling second grade dropout, but after rejecting dozens of petitions sent in by Dexter, they eventually gave up and decided to just make some shit up, leading to Dexter becoming the official informer of deer, tasking him with keeping logs on the local deer population. And over statistics of does and bucks alike, Dexter ruled with an iron fist, triumphantly concluding what many had already known that there weren't any deer in Malden, Massachusetts. <laughs> Satisfied with his political... Keep track of the deer, my guy! That's your job! Stop writing us letter, you dumb fuck! We'll give you a title. Inform us of any deer that comes along. Okay. Career, Dexter then set his sights on greater financial ventures. So a little history, in 1775, as part of our growing independence from Britain, the Continental Congress decided to establish their own currency, known as the Continental Dollar, real creative there. Then the Revolutionary War started, and it dawned Stab. on people that these pieces of paper wouldn't be very useful in a giant pile of wet tea and smoldering patriots, causing their value to do one of those horny eagle death spirals. Then the Congress did, you know, that stupid thing that every high schooler learns is stupid, not invading Russia in winter but the other one, practically making them worth less than their weight in paper and ink. And wouldn't you know it, a good portion of the Continental Army was paid with these. So by the time the war ended, many veterans were left totally destitute. The aristocrats were they like, got, well, these grass- Well, they got fucked, so the aristocrats goes like, not my problem. So by the time the war ended, many veterans were left totally destitute. The aristocrats were like, well, these grass-eating untermenches did kind of give us a country, so whatever, we'll throw them a few cents and take this trash off their hands. Dexter was like, ooh, ooh, I'm a wealthman, I I'm gonna do that too. And he spent the majority of his savings buying a boatload after boatload of the 1780s equivalent of blockbuster gift cards. By all accounts, this should have been his ruin, but by some stroke of luck, after the Constitution was ratified, the new government decided that they'd trade Continentals for treasury 
bonds worth 1% of their face value. Doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind, Dexter bought thousands of crates of bills for fractions of pennies apiece. So as buybacks began across the country, his stockpile appreciated massively in value. And this informer of Deer realized that, for the first time, there were a lot of bucks in Malden. But just because he was now a man of the upper crust doesn't mean he let it go to his head. Sure, he might have purchased the most luxurious chateau the money could buy through daily Playboy Mansion-style ragers and commissioned over 40 statues of America's greatest heroes, one of which was of himself, with a plaque calling him, quote, the greatest philosopher in the Western world, with a plaque calling him... Now you're just being a dick. I'm gonna make some, put some statues up of famous people, and I'll put myself on it. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Quote, the greatest philosopher in the Western world. Despite his incredibly tacky displays of wealth, his contemptuous contemporaries still saw him for the loud, illiterate rube he was. So they started giving him deliberately awful investment tips in order to get him to bankrupt himself. One such piece of advice was that he should ship warming pans to the Caribbean. For those of you born after 1850, a warming pan's this dish on a long pole that you fill up with hot coals to warm up your bed. Not much use in a tropical paradise. But Dexter was- Warm up your bed? Doesn't that start a fire, like, underneath? Over- Wait, what? Long pole that you so on top of the bed? Or under the bed either way there's gonna be a fire what fill up with hot coals to warm up your bed not much use in a tropical paradise but dexter yeah. was undeterred by such frivolous things as logic went ahead and sent over 40,000 of them to the west indies when they arrived the locals didn't really know what they were looking at and decided to of use course. them as ladles for the sugar and molasses refineries and by the end of it dexter sold every single one at a markup of nearly 80 percent frustrated that their plan backfired the elite <laughs> the aristocrats are like fucking this this man <laughs> we can't get rid of him what can we do? It's then told him to literally carry coal to Newcastle, which is an old idiom used to describe a pointless task based off the fact that Newcastle was one of the world's biggest producers of coal. The only idioms Dexter knew about all involved different animals shitting in the woods. So he took their word on good faith and went along with it. But by some divine providence, by the time the shipment arrived, the Newcastle coal miners had all gone on strike and Dexter once again cleared the entire shipment with a hefty profit. He was like, man, I am so smart. By this point, he was pretty confident in his speculation skills, so he started making seemingly far-fetched ventures all by himself. One time he had a bunch of stray cats rounded up for basically free, which sounds like herding cats, but what do I know? And he sent them to the Caribbean, where they were gobbled up en masse. Not like eaten, but purchased to deal with all the rat infestations. In another instance, he bought up just about every whale bone in Boston. And coincidentally, at the same time in France, men started wearing corsets too for some reason. Demand went way up, Dexter's laughing. Now from an outside perspective- Dexter is a smart but stupid man but he's wreaking it all, bringing in all that money, so good for him. At the end of the day, Dexter was a very shrewd merchant. So at this point in my research, I was like, wait a minute, is he smart? Then I learned about his life outside of business. Dexter considered himself extremely knowledgeable on just about every topic. Key words, considered himself. Consider for himself. example, he once stumbled upon a guy painting a- So that means like basically he just researched stuff on his own, made up his own stuff and just did whatever. Those kind of people today, you know what I'm talking. You know who I'm talking about. At every topic, key words considered himself. For example, he once stumbled upon a guy painting a sign to go along with the newly built statue of Jefferson. And when he saw that the sign called Jefferson the writer of the Declaration of Independence, Dexter lost his freaking mind and insisted that Jefferson did not pen the DOI, but rather the Constitution. Spoiler alert: not remotely true. He was in France at the time. An easy mistake to make today, sure. But this was only like 10 years after the fact. That's like someone today saying Obama didn't kill bin laden dumbass that was bill clinton anyway when the painter refused to change the inscription dexter started shooting at him with a long rifle until he complied real Jean Damn, dude. dexter made sure to surround himself with the requisite number of weirdos to maintain this level of delusion one of which was jonathan Plummer, a man whom dexter paid to be his poet laureate writing only the most laudatory odes in his honor mind you this wasn't just your run poet laureate writing only the there once was a man from Melden who thought that his wiener was bald and he got some Rogaine and Groove such a mane that went on the can it would fall in. So, hold on a second. Did he hired a dude just to write poems and read it to him? Okay most laudatory odes in his honor. Mind you, this wasn't just your run-of-the-mill wise and wizened wordsmith. Jonathan sold fish for a living and porn. He just kind of went along with the whole thing for the pocket change. Besides his entourage, Dexter occasionally spent...
What? The mill wise and wizened wordsmith, Jonathan, sold fish for a living. And porn. He just kind of went along with the whole thing for the pocket change. Besides his entourage, Dexter occasionally spent time with the total geeds known as his family. He had two children, whom the New England Historical Society describes as a half-mad drunk and a completely mad drunk, <laughs> respectively. And he could... What's the difference between a... Historical Society describes as a half-mad drunk and a completely... What's the difference between half mad, completely mad drunk? You're 50% drunk, and the other one is 100% crazy drunk? I, what? ...the mad drunk, respectively. And he couldn't stand his wife on account of her perceived constant nagging, to the point where he would tell guests he was unmarried and that he just had a ghost in his house. Just like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a sea <laughs> hag. You know, mansion <laughs> Oh, Timothy, you gotta take out the trash. Like, Timothy, who is that? Is that your wife? Nah, bruh. She a ghost. She never leaves. <laughs> I'm si <laughs> I'm literally touching you. It's still a ghost. Like, I'm slapping you. It's like, it's a ghost. <laughs> Can she walk through walls? Text Timothy? No, not really, but she's a ghost. <laughs> she just won't leave. <laughs> Oh my god. And that he just had a ghost in his house. Just like, oh yeah, that's a sea hag. You know, mansion built on some old Indian shipwreck or something. Timmy, please. I'm cold and my hands are rheumatic. Find it in your heart to light the fireplace for me? Yeah, plenty of that in hell, you banshee bitch. <laughs> One day, in a massive stroke of ego, Dexter decided to fake his own death, complete with a lavish funeral service just to see who would show up. Lucky for him, about 3,000 people from all walks of life turned up. Though initially staying out of sight, he soon noticed that his wife wasn't crying. So in response, he jumped out and started hitting her upside the head with a cane in front of everybody. But <laughs> this guy, I, I can't with this guy. <laughs> That's your wife, Timothy. She's a ghost. Don't pay attention to her. She's not real. I'm going to fake my death. Everyone's invited. Hey, isn't that his wife? Is she a ghost? Actually, no, she's real. All right. He's over in the bushes. This bitch is not crying. I'll teach you not to cry. <laughs> Bro. As is true, once he jumped out and started hitting her upside the head with a cane in front of everybody. But as his true mortality grew closer, Dexter knew he needed a legacy and decided to pen his memoirs titled A Pickle for the Knowing Ones, which was basically just 20 pages of unhinged ranting about politics, religion, his wife, and whatever else came to mind. No punctual. So what Reddit is today? Situation. Random capitalization. The most amazing spelling I've ever seen. Here's yeah, definitely read it. The excerpts. George Washington. Attitude. Philosopher. Tobacco. General. And this is all just from the first few lines. The entire book is written like this. And just like everything else the guy did, the thing sold like fucking hotcakes. Why does anybody even try? The best part is that when he got complaints about the total lack of grammatical anything, in the second edition of the book, he put an extra page at the end full of nothing but punctuation marks, with a little <laughs> note saying that anyone who felt like whining could just- Founder Mr. Printer, the knowing ones complain of my book. The the first edition had no stops. I put in a noof here and they may pepper insulted as they bless he. Wow. Petty. Stick a full of nothing but punctuation marks with a little note saying that anyone who felt like whining could just stick them wherever they wanted. Dexter died in 1806 and by and large he probably should have ended up in Davy Jones' locker. But given the circumstances, I imagine the big man upstairs dropped his big deck of mortal soul trading cards at just the right moment, letting him slip through the pearly gates undetected. And legend has it that to this day, if you pray to the name Timothy Dexter, he'll look upon you kindly and share his skills with you all. Wait a minute. Share? Skill. Oh no. <gasps> Skillshare is an online learning community got me. with over 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited to improve air quality, but you don't know. You got I'm me. Sure your dorm room already learning today with a special offer just for who visits the link in the description. So please quit your public McTurition. I'm Salmonella, and thank you for watching. Oh, Salmonella. All right. That's how you say his name. Okay. Salmonella. Oh, I did. He killed Garfield. The presidential assassination nobody talks about. This guy's actually hilarious. Right. Oh, this Timothy Dexter guy is like... <laughs>
What a legend. What a goddamn legend. I enjoyed this so much. Like, oh, wow. Anyways, that's it for now. Human on Nation, Human on Freak Out. Bye. He's, or your wife is a ghost. I mean, fuck, I fucked that up. Never mind. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito, nos vamos pegando.